family, uh, we go camping every year at the beach. Uh, my parents have a camper down there, and, and camping at the beach, some of you might be saying, I'm not ever camping at the beach. I want my hotel. I want my nice place. But, but it, it means something to me, camping. And I could sit here right now and convince you and tell you how awesome camping at the beach is. We get to stay outside. When we come back to the beach, the kids have their bikes running around, uh, riding around the area. Um, there, there's, in this campground we stay in, there's free putt-putt and free bikes and ice cream places and everything that you need in this campground. It's an amazing place. We love it at the beach. This is in Myrtle Beach. I don't know if any of y'all been to Myrtle Beach before. Myrtle, Myrtle, Myrtle. Yeah. That's where, <laughs> that's where we go to the beach. And I can share that with you because I've been there. Because I get it, right? I can give that to you because I get how awesome it is because I've experienced it. I've, I've felt the sand at my feet. I've played with the seashells. I've ran in and out of the waves. I've rode the little boogie boards in and out. Not much anymore, but I, I, I used to do that a lot. I have came up with silly games on the beach with my, with my nephew with, with a soccer ball. And you can't use your feet. You can only use your head. And you have to hit it. You know, we're out there all day long play, competing against each other. I've, I've been a part of that. I've experienced it. And because I have received it, I can give that to you. But if you've never been at the beach, you really can't give that to somebody, can you? You can't explain that to them. You can't give somebody something that you've never got yourself. You can try to explain it. You can try to help them understand how awesome the beach is. But really, you're just guessing. And you're, you're, you're watching a video and saying the beach is like this. So, you know, it's got to be like that. And, 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 you're, and, you're, and you're just giving your uh, kind of opinion towards it. And I want to look at that scripture real quick. Where it says, and Jesus said, it was in Luke 23, 34. If you have your Bibles, you can go there. Luke 23, 34. The scripture says, and it's on the screen. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So here's what I want to tell you today. Guess what? Everyone in this room, you are forgiven. Praise you are Lord. forgiven. That's right. You are forgiven. But here's the thing, the, the, the extent that you understand how much you are forgiven will be the extent that you forgive others. Did you hear that? You have been forgiven. And to follow that up, I, I wrote down right here, it says, to the extent, and I believe I have a slide for it, to the extent and depth you have, that you know and feel forgiven by God, you are going to be able to forgive others. So just like... If you, if you don't get how awesome the beach is, you can't share how awesome the beach is with other people. If you don't get how forgiven you are, you can't give it to anyone else. If you don't get it, you have to get how forgiven you are by God. How much of a sinner we once were, maybe we still are. He still forgives us. And to the extent that we understand what Jesus did for us on that cross as he uttered those words, then we can better forgive other people. Think about this. Jesus, as he hung on that cross, if you look in John, it says here, Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. Has anybody ever been flogged with a lead-tipped whip in this room? Thank the Lord we haven't, right? With a lead-tipped whip. I almost grabbed the Passion of the Christ video and played it during this time of the service so that you could really experience how beat our, our Savior was. And what he really went for, through for you and I. A lead tip whip. Then it says, the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put a purple robe on him. Hell, king of the Jews, they said. And then they went on outside and said to the people, I'm going to bring him out to you, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. They knew that he was not guilty. Pilate knew that, but they beat him. They punched him. We talked about last week all the things that Jesus went through. Now he's hanging on a cross, suffering. Bleeding, beat up, broken, mentally struggling. And he says those words, the first words from the cross, he says, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. And I ask the question today, what does that mean to you? That you have been forgiven by God. Does it mean that Maybe you think through it like this. You know what? I, I know I'm forgiven by God, but I'm a pretty good person day to day. You know, and every once in a while, messed up 
some, so I need forgiven a little bit. And you may, may think like that. Maybe you um, think, um, I don't even believe that. Like, I don't even believe that I'm forgiven. Like, there's no way that uh, Jesus could forgive me for everything that I've done. There's, it's, not, it's not even possible. No one knows what I've done. So I can't be forgiven for all of that. Or maybe you're sitting there today and you're like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I get this scripture. I understand what Jesus did for me. I know who Jesus is. I've built this relationship with him. And I have a firm understanding for how he died for me on the cross. And because of that, I get it. I understand. I know. It lives in me. And here's what I know. Wherever you stand on that answer, what, however you think about how much Jesus has forgiven you, that is how much you will forgive others. To the extent that you understand how Jesus forgave you, you can forgive others. I truly believe that. This message today is about forgiveness. You can go a million different ways with a message about forgiveness. But I want to really truly understand that we can't give what we don't get. We can't give it. If we don't understand, if we don't get how much Jesus has forgiven us and what he did for us, we can't give it to others. And when you really be, begin to look at what Jesus said there, it'll help us move forward. I'm, I'm praying today that it'll help you move forward and give others forgiveness. Because here's what I know, and, and you guys know this too. It's not like an eye-opener, hi ya, but it's like we live in a broken world, right? Do we? It's a broken world. We get hurt every day, some of us. We get beat every day, some of us. We get lied to every day, some of us. We get talked about, gossiped about, and maybe we do that. It's a broken world. We get fired for no reason. I mean, th things in our life happen, and we feel as if we are being attacked. It's a broken world that we, we live in. And the thing is, how do we deal with that in this broken world? As our human nature, if we do it ourselves, we can't. We make it all about us. We process it. It's me. Like, I can't believe they did that to me, so on and so forth. But I believe that Scripture is very clear of how we deal with the hurt that we go through in this world. You ready for it? We forgive others. <laughs> we forgive others. He calls us to forgive. He doesn't call us to retaliate. He doesn't call us to get that person back. When somebody hurts us, he doesn't call us to think through the process of, I got hurt, so now I need to hurt them. That's not what he tells us to do. Jesus, as he hangs on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He says, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgiveness sounds so easy, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I get it, Pastor. I've heard this forgiveness message a hundred times. I know I need to forgive people. C.S. Lewis says this. He says, Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have to have something to forgive. Until they have to forgive someone. Everybody says it's a good idea until they have somebody to forgive. No, not yet. Not yet, Greg. We're, we're, we're really early. You start doing that now and I'm going to, you know, jump off this stage. Yeah. That wasn't the look I told you I was going to give you. I'll let you know next time. I'll make sure that it looks like this. <laughs> I'm just getting started, brother. Thank you. If we're going to be able to forgive, we have to know and feel the extent and depth we have been forgiven. Amen. We have to understand that, guys. We have to understand that. So let's do that. You guys ready? Let's do that, all right? Let's look deeply, deeply into these words that say, Forgot Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What do we see about this verse? First and foremost, the first thing we see, I'm going to teach a little bit today. Um, I shared the, the main idea with my mother-in-law uh, on the phone, and she goes, oh, that's deep. And I thought to myself, oh, that is deep. Like, I, I really hope that I can communicate it well so that it still applies, because sometimes deep doesn't mean applicable. Like, you guys have to, I want you to get it today. I want you to leave here today understanding forgiveness. The first thing we know about this scripture is this. It was a prayer. Look at it. Put the scripture back on the screen for me. It was a prayer. It was a prayer. It says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. He was praying to his father. Jesus was praying 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And here's what's crazy about this. He was going through the hardest time of his life. The hardest thing. He'd just been beat, now he's hanging. And when he speaks for the first time from the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And what's even more impressive about that is that he was praying for our forgiveness. He wasn't praying for himself. As he's literally hanging there dying. He was praying for our forgiveness. We can understand maybe if he was praying, you know, Father, they nailed me to a piece of wood. I came to save them. And, how, and, and now they're trying to kill me. Father, strike them dead. Like we could, we could, as people, we could understand that, right? Father, take them out. Get me off this cross, Father. But that's not what he prayed. We could understand, uh, Father, I know I have to endure the cross for the salvation of your people, but it's so difficult and painful, so please help me to endure it. Help me. He, he, he could have prayed for himself through all of this. And I could understand that prayer, and I'm sure you could too. When we go through hurt, we want to pray for ourselves. We want to pray, God, you know, help me deal with this, so on and so forth. But Jesus did what Jesus does, and Jesus has always done, and he began to be you-focused, not him-focused. He began to pray for you from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know, know not what they do. It was a prayer, and the prayer was for us. His focus was on God and those who were killing him. When he said, Father, forgive them. For, the, for those who were hurting him and yelling at him and just spit on him and punched him and kicked him, he was praying for them. He was less concerned about the wrong committed against him and more concerned about the wrong committed against who? God. He, he put himself aside. So if we understand that's how he was praying, what should we do when we're wrong? What should we do when we're lied to, when we're kicked, when we're beaten, whatever that looks like in your life? We should pray as God did. We have to pray. We have to pray. We have, we have to begin by praying, but we have to realize the wrong committed is not truly against us, but it's against God. And if we can recognize that, because that's what Jesus did. He's looking at men and people that just beat him, but he recognized that they're not really hurting me they're hurting God so when when there is a wrong against us when you're lied to really they're hurting God more than they are you but we want to process it as it's about us but if we can begin to look at our prayers and the way we look at hurt and things and say man that really hurt me but ooh, wow I bet it hurt God even more and you begin to pray in a different way if anybody could have been rightly offended by a wrong done against him it was Jesus right it was Jesus. Yet he first cared about the restoration between a sinner and a father. Because that's why he came here. John 14, 6 says this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he was hanging on the cross for you. So that you could have a way to heaven. And he wanted to make sure that God would forgive you. And so he's praying for you. So how do we pray? We, need, we don't need to pray how a person has wronged us and ask for the strength to forgive them. We need to pray how the person has hurt and sinned against God and ask Him to forgive them. If God can forgive, how much more should we forgive? How much more should we forgive? If God can forgive those people, how much should we forgive the people who sin against us? This isn't just the way God forgives people, but also how He forgives you. How he forgives you. God has forgiven us and we have to understand that. And to the extent that we understand how much God's forgiven us and all the sin we do every single day, we have to forgive others. And we can forgive others. So we have to kind of refocus and realign the way we pray, right? We got we to think about it differently, kind of through a new lens. You know, instead of praying like, you know, God, they've hurt me. You know, pray for them to realize they've hurt me, so on and so forth. We say, God, they've hurt God. They've hurt you. I'm so sorry they did that to you through me. God, can you, can you help them with that? And it changes your heart. And you go from this whole concept of, man, I can't pray for this person, to now you're openly praying for them to be restored with the Father instead of making it about yourself. 
Only when you realize Jesus wasn't praying for just the people out there, but you specifically realize he was praying for you from that cross. You, you are forgiven. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let's look at two things. I want to look at two things more in the scripture. To whom did Jesus offer this prayer for forgiveness? And when did Jesus offer this prayer for forgiveness? And I think this will, this will help us a lot when it comes to forgiving others. Two questions. To whom and when? Who did Jesus pray for? Who did Jesus pray for in this scripture? When it says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who was he praying for? He was praying for people who knew not what they were doing. He says, forgive them for they know not what they do. They knew they just beat him, but they really didn't know who they were beating and what they were doing. It, was offered to those who re who, it wasn't offered to those who were repenting and, and coming to him. It was offered to the people that didn't even know that they needed forgiveness. They didn't even know what was going on. It's not our confession and repentance that births God's mercy, but it's God's mercy that births our confession and repentance. Because of what he's done, we should forgive others. And because of what he's done, we have been forgiven. God acts first. We act second. It's not that we first loved God, but God first loved us. And so what does that mean if we understand that? If he forgave us from the cross as he was beaten, what should we do? How should we pray? When should we pray? What does that look like? I wrote this down. Many times our willingness to forgive is directly tied to the other person's ability to know, not, know what they've done. Anybody else deal with that in here? We're willing, I want to read it right here. We, we're willing to forgive just as long as we see this person truly knows how bad they've messed up. Right? I'm not forgiving them until they realize they hurt me. I'm not doing it. Until, until I can tell they're suffering because of what they did to me, I'm not forgiving them. I'm going to make them sit on it for a week. Two weeks, month, year. What's your story? I'm not forgiving them until they hurt. I'm not doing it. We're willing to forgive as long as we see the sorrow and remorse they're feeling, but not before them. They got to hurt before I forgive them. We, we, we process that and we go through that. But is that what Jesus did? He forgave from the cross as he was hurting and he prayed for them. In light of that, how should we forgive? We shouldn't wait till our hurt is gone. We shouldn't, you know, make them wait a long time. But Jesus, as he hung on the cross and was beaten and bloody, the first thing that came out of his mouth was forgive them. The first thing, forgive them. And he was forgiving people that didn't know what really they had done. Romans, uh, I wrote this down, Romans 8.26 says, The Spirit Himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groaning. Even when we don't know what we need to pray for and why we should pray, the Spirit prays for us. You guys get that? Do you understand that? The Holy Spirit prays for you even when you don't know you need prayer. Jesus was praying for them even when they didn't get it. We want to wait as people to not forgive others until they really get it but what Jesus is modeling before us is we need to forgive people that don't even really know they need forgiven and we don't need to wait we need to do it soon we need to do it quick Jesus forgave from the cross so we should forgive and not make people wait not make people wait that second question is when did Jesus offer this prayer when did Jesus offer this prayer it wasn't a few Days after the resurrection, after his hands healed up and his scars were gone. It wasn't after he had dealt with the pain and kind of got back on his feet. It was in the hurt that Jesus forgave those people. The ones that didn't even know they needed it. That's when he did it. It was in the hurt. It was in the very midst of the pain and wrongdoing. While the hammer still had blood on it that just knocked his hand into the cross. Jesus is forgiving those men. Yet we want to make people wait before we forgive. Mm -hmm. We have to forgive even in the pain. Mm -hmm. 
You're hurt one day. That very night we're praying, God, I was hurt by this person. Please forgive them that they hurt me and help me forgive them too. God, go before me. Prepare my heart. Instantly, not down the road, we forgive like Jesus forgave in the hurt. We need to forgive. I got something I want to read to you along by Charles Spurgeon. You guys heard of him? He says this. It was not a prayer for enemies who had done him an ill deed years before, but for those who were there and then murdering him. Not in cold blood did the Savior pray after he had forgotten the injury and could the more easily forgive it. But while the first red drop of blood were spurting on the hands which drove the nails, while yet the hammer was bestained with crimson gore, his blessed mouth poured out the fresh warm prayer, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If, a, if our Savior might have paused for intercessory prayer, it was surely when they fastened him to the tree, right? It was surely when they fastened him from the tree. When they were guilty of direct acts of deadly violence to his divine person, he might then have ceased to present petition on their behalf. Then he could have done it, maybe. But sin cannot tie, listen to this, please, listen. But sin cannot tie the tongue of your interceding friend. Oh, what comfort is here. You have sinned, believer. You have grieved his spirit, but you have not stopped that potent tongue which pleads for you. You have not stopped it. Some of you are thinking, I don't understand. Pastor, you don't understand the wrongs that I've committed. And you don't think God can forgive you for those. You don't think he can. But your sin, no matter what it is, has, has not stopped and will not stop and cannot stop the potent tongue of Jesus which pleads for you. You can't stop Jesus from praying for you. He prayed for you from the cross. The Spirit continues to pray for you every day. He wants you to forgive others and He wants you to be forgiven. Of course, we have a part in that too, right? We have to come to Him and ask Him for forgiveness. But in that same idea as we're asking for forgiveness, we have to forgive others. We truly have to forgive others. We can't wait to forgive others down the road. We have to forgive others in the pain. We have to forgive others in the pain. I've been married for 10 years this coming October. We celebrate our 10-year anniversary. Amy and I have a great relationship. Of course, there's always arguments. You know, every, every marriage has some arguments. Um, and there's been times I can think back. She's not here today. She had to stay home with my son who's six. I could blame this all on her, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, because she'll, she'll listen to the podcast back and listen, watch the video and then have to deal with that at home. But, <laughs> but there's been times that we've had arguments, right? And there's been times when I've thought to myself, you know what? That really hurt. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say anything to her for a couple hours. I'm going to sit in my seat as I drive down the road and make her sit there and know she hurt me and make her deal with it. But Jesus models before us that we should forgive quickly, that we should forgive because we know that God has forgiven us. And out of our understanding for what he did for us, we can forgive others that way. My heart breaks when I think about some of those times that I've made her wait for my forgiveness and kind of punished her with that. Maybe you've dealt with that too or you've participated in that same kind of act on your wife or your friends or someone else. I don't know what it is. But here's what I know. We will never look more like Jesus than we, when we forgive radical wrongdoing with radical forgiveness we should radically forgive because we have been radically forgiven when somebody's hurt us the worst when it's looked terrible what's happened to us we should radically forgive because Christ radically forgave us and he will radically forgive you 
I don't know what it is that maybe you deal with today. I don't know maybe what's happened to you. I personally can't understand probably the pain you've gone through because I haven't went through it personally. But our Father, our Savior, Jesus Himself has. He's went through the pain. He's dealt with those struggles. And He radically forgives us. And He radically forgave you. So we should radically forgive others. I truly believe that as Christians, as believers in Jesus, as followers of Christ, we should be the most radical forgivers there is. Now that doesn't mean we're taken advantage of and we don't take up for ourselves and those types of things. But we should choose to look through the lens of, man, that person is really, really sinning and hurting God more than he is me. And soften our heart towards that person and learn to forgive on a whole nother level. I believe we can. I believe you can. If you would, I'd love for you to stand to your feet real quick. And here's what we're going to do. Stand to your feet for me. I'm shutting down. Maybe today you've dealt with some of these things we've talked about. Maybe you've dealt with the whole idea that I can't forgive right now somebody. There's somebody I can't forgive right this second. I can't do it. Maybe that you've been making someone wait for your forgiveness for years or months or days or hours. Christ is calling us to forgive and maybe nudging you right now to lay it at the cross, to lay it down here at the altar, to maybe bow your heads and pray, God, help me to forgive them. God, I'm sorry they sinned against you. They also have hurt me. Father, restore them. Restore our relationship. I don't know what it looks like for you. I, I don't know the, your story. Maybe today you have someone you need to forgive. You Don't they think they need forgiveness like we talked about? Because they don't realize what they've done. I'm not forgiving them until they know that they know that they know. And then, not until then am I going to forgive. But God's nudging you to take the first step of forgiveness. Maybe that's it. Jesus, as he hung on the cross, looked down on us and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We have to forgive others the same way. So if you'll shut your eyes, I'll pray for us. And here's how I want this to look. If you're struggling to forgive someone in your life now, or maybe it's been going on for a long time, I'd like for you to respond. I'd like for you to come up and kneel and pray, God, help me to forgive this person. God, lay it on my heart, whatever that looks like. Or maybe you're here today and you'd like to be forgiven. Maybe you'd like to come and lay your sins, your struggles, your pain, whatever that is that you've been through. Maybe you'd like to lay them at the feet of Jesus. Or maybe you're still putting hammers and nails into Jesus' hands by the sins you're doing daily. And you want to lay those at his feet and you want to say, God, forgive me. Lord, save me. I don't know what it looks like for you when it comes to forgiveness. There's so many levels. But this is your opportunity to respond. Jesus wants you to give him your struggles. And he wants you to come to him. And he wants to forgive you today. And he wants you to forgive those around you. His words are powerful. Father, forgive them. Out of that one sentence, we should forgive others.